Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm James, working on this Balsa USA Stingray 120 kit build. So in this video, I'm going to be working on the landing gear. The kit comes with this two-piece pre-bent wire landing gear setup, which is really strong. I don't have a problem with it in terms of its functionality. I think it's going to work great if you use this one. However, just personal preference, I like the look of a solid one-piece landing gear like this one right here. So this is just kind of a generic made in China carbon fiber landing gear and it comes in different sizes and I'll go over, I'll show a little bit of the detail on this in, in a few minutes, but I'm going to be using this one for the kit. I will have to do a little bit of a modification in order to get it to work, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. But before I do that, I do want to go over briefly just how you would install the wire landing gear just in case you're interested in seeing that. I'm not going to actually install it, but I'm going to take it out and look at the plans and I'll show you kind of how it would, would go on. And then I'll just move on to how I'm going to install the solid piece here. Here's the plan, the side view of the fuselage showing the landing gear setup here. So if you remember from the earlier videos when I was constructing the sides of the fuselage, I installed these two blocks, one on either side right there. And these are these blocks right here, as you can see. So the way it's going to work is, let me pull these guys out of here. The way it's going to work is you actually have another block here. And this block, is again, the side view is, goes like this. So the way it would work if you're going to be installing the wire landing gear is we're going to cut this block to fit down inside of here. You just basically have to trim the edges off on, on my block. And then once it's in there, you'll see it's got these two holes and they're offset from each other. And the reason they're offset is because one wire will be on the front and one wire will be in the back. So what would happen is you would glue this guy in, you'd cut it to fit and glue it in. And then we would drill out both sides of the block to match up the holes in these other blocks. And then the landing gear would plug into those holes through the block. So if you can imagine if I cut up, if I drilled a hole through the block here, it would be sticking through the block like so and into, into the, the hole here like that. So pretty simple setup. This is a very common, common way that landing gear is, is constructed on, on kits. You see it a lot. So you'd have one gear like this and one gear. And again, it would be, I'm, I'm not, sh I'm not showing it perfect because I don't have the hole drilled in it. But you essentially have the, both gears in here like that. And then this is going to be, of course, glued down. And then it's going to be held with a couple of retainers. There's a couple, as it's shown here, a couple landing gear, oops, a couple landing gear straps with some screws. And then what happens is when this is all installed, um, the sheeting will come up on both sides to meet that. And that's, you know, that's a nice sturdy, sturdy setup. So anyhow, that's how that would work if you're going to use this. I don't have a problem with it, like I mentioned. If you like it that way, by all means, install it. All right, so let me show you this landing gear here. So like I said, it took me a while to find the right size. In fact, I got to the point where I think I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to find the right size. So I did find this one. And the thing about this, this one is it comes, and I'm going to put a couple pictures up, and I'll put the model number here. But you'll see that it comes with different sizes. It's the same shape, it just comes in different sizes. And you can order them, and there's a table that comes on the websites that show the different sizes. And the one that this one is, and I'll write it down here, because they get pretty big. Um, this is actually the smallest one um, of this particular brand or this particular set that I have. This is the LG landing gear, I'm assuming. ZX 260 and it's the number well it's 26 cc and cf1 now if you type this into let's do a search on the internet you will find you will find this landing gear and you'll probably find it from a variety of sources and so again, I think it's kind of a generic one and a lot of hobby distributors um, 
you know, China based, I believe most of them or all of them. And you could purchase it. I think this was like 16, 17 bucks or something like that. And I think I did get it. Actually, I think it was sent from China. So it took a little while. It took like three or four weeks to get it. But here it is. Okay, so a couple things I needed to consider. First of all, obviously the width. I needed to make sure the width was going to be good enough. And which is here. So I think this turned out to be pretty good. My width. It's about, this is four inches here. This is a little bit bigger. And then I also wanted to check to make sure that they had the proper distance from the fuselage to the center of the wheel. And on the kit, or on the plans here, my cheap ruler, it's a little less than five inches. And the kit here, or I guess I can put it down, use this line here. You can see that, put it like this, the center is about meh, five and meh, maybe five and three quarters or so, maybe five and a half, five and three quarters, somewhere around there, which is no big deal. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. So this is you know the best size that I could find, and this is the one I'm going to use, and it's carbon fiber, so it should be nice and strong. Let me show you how I'm going to install this. So it's about a quarter inch from the bottom of this block to the bottom of the fuselage here. And I have a quarter inch thick piece of plywood. And I think this edge is pretty straight right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to recess it, just kind of set it in here like this. I'll trim it, obviously, on both sides so it sets in here really nicely. And then I'm not going to make it this wide. I'm going to make it somewhere around two inches or so. And I'm going to epoxy it in. And then once this is installed, I'm going to mount the landing gear on here using a set of machine screws. I have quarter inch by 20 by one inch and also a quarter by 20 inch by three quarter. I don't know what side will be the best. I'll just check it to see what length is the best. I bought just a set of each. And then I'm gonna screw those into, I'm gonna use these, these T, T nuts. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tape on here and I'll measure, I'll make my measurements. I'm gonna offset my, my screws. I'll probably put two toward the back and then I'll probably put two sort of the, toward the front um, or, or, or the opposite of that, it doesn't really matter. I just wanna have them, instead of having them in a line like that, I wanna have them sort of offset so that they give a better, a little bit better sort of a bond, um, distribute the, the force, if you will, a little bit better that way. And hopefully between doing that and then epoxying it on here, and I will reinforce it, I'll probably use some triangular stock or some square balsa stock um, in between, just along the bottom edge of it to attach to the to the plate and also to the fuselage just to reinforce it. And I think that's going to work really well. Well, I need to make sure that this plate is going to be nice and square. So I think this edge right here is actually really nice. It's nice and straight. These other sides are a little bit rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as sort of like my starting point. And then I'm just going to trim. I'm going to draw on here. Well, you can kind of see it's not. So I'm just going to go ahead and just draw a line on here on both sides. Oops, I'll go from this side again. Like this. And then that'll be then these sides will be square with this side, and then I'll come back and I'll cut this middle piece off here. And again, so hopefully I'll end up with a nice rectangular, nice square rectangular piece, and I'll just set that in here.
All right, so I got a nice fit with this. I actually made it two and a half inches wide, just kind of increased it a little bit, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna be epoxied in here like this. And then just basically the bond all around here will hopefully keep it nice and secure. So I just wanted to make it a little bit wider to get an extra, a little bit extra bonding on it. So the landing gear itself, oops, hit the camera. The landing gear itself is gonna go somewhere right about here. And I realize it's off center from the plate, but that's just because it's up, it's up against this bulkhead here. But I don't, I don't have a problem with that. That's, that's fine. And it's gonna go like this. What I realized though was that, so what I wanna do, as I mentioned before, I wanna push, put two bolts sort of on the, on one side, as far out as I can go, and then another set sort of on the in, sort of on this side, and offset them so that I can, can distribute the, um, the force, if you will, along the base plate here. But I realized that the T-nuts are, have a pretty large diameter, and I want them to be as far over toward the sides as possible. So let me get one out here real quick. I'll show you. So the T-nuts are gonna be obviously in here like this. And what I realized is that if I don't take these little blocks out or cut these blocks out, the T-nuts are gonna be limited to here and here, and then the two other ones will be sort of in here like this. And again, I could put them in a line, but either way, the the T-nuts are gonna be, or the bolts themselves are gonna be set in about an inch or so. And I'd rather have them as close as possible, sort of out here toward the edge. Because again, you know, I wanna distribute the force as much as I can across the base of the landing gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will, I think I'm gonna have to kind of saw these out of here. Okay, so I know what you may be thinking is why did I put these blocks in in the first place if I wasn't gonna use them? Well, when I first started the kit, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find the right landing gear that I, that I could use for this. And I also thought that, well, at the very least, if I put the blocks in, they, they won't be in the way or whatever my modification is, I can probably work around them. But it just turns out that I, that I couldn't. So anyhow, this is fine. And I'll put, like I said, I'll put the plate in and we'll reinforce it and we'll connect the uh, landing gear with the T-nuts and we'll be good to go.
All right, so just to note, the quarter inch T-nut is actually has a little bit bigger diameter than a quarter inch. I think it's around 932 or so. So you have to make it the holes a little bit bigger to accommodate the actual T-nut itself. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these back on the bottom. I'm gonna put them on from the inside. Okay, well, it's a little hard to see them down inside there, but, oh, there you go. And I just pressed them in. And I'm gonna use, what I'll do is I'll use the landing gear to kind of seat them properly. And then I'll probably pull the landing gear off and then I'll get like a washer or something and then draw them completely into the wood. And I should be finished with it. I'll probably put a little bit of glue around them, maybe a CA or maybe an epoxy, but they're, they're pretty solid. I bought a one inch and I bought three quarter inch size. And I think I'm just gonna go with the three quarter inch because this is only a quarter inch thick piece of plywood here. And then the actual landing gear looks like it's maybe a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe it's three sixteenths or so. And I don't want to have too many, um, you know, screws protruding up into the into the bottom here, especially when the fuel tank is near there. So I'll just try it with these ones for now and see how it comes out. Well, they went in pretty easily. I was able to get them to seat down on top of that plywood. And so I'm not gonna have to take them out and use like a washer, like I said. Sometimes what you wanna do with the T-nut because they're hard to draw through and you don't wanna damage or kind of either scar up, like if you're doing your firewall or your landing gear, you don't wanna to apply too much force to it if you don't have to. So it's good to sometimes use a washer instead of the actual device like your engine mount or your landing gear. But these went in pretty, pretty good, so I'm happy with that. I'll drip a little bit of um, CA along those, but then you know they really can't go anywhere. So anyhow, those are in and looks like they're pretty good. Okay, well that's going to be about it for this video. So the next step in this build is going to be to install the engine mount and I'm looking forward to doing that. That's going to be fun. Okay, so until then, thanks for watching my channel. I always appreciate it and we'll see you next time.